So, like, the Institute was an experience. <laughs> uh, it was an experience. It was, like, a really, really, really helpful, confusing, frustrating experience. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, like, after 12 hours in ER, like, an ambulance came from all the way in Vancouver, which is, like, Bay Area, like, which is, like, super far away from San Francisco, so, like, um, but, unfortunately, like, they didn't have any open ba beds in any of the mental hospitals, like, near where I live, like, in the Sacramento County, or even Roseville, so the only one that had an open bed was all the way in Vancouver, which is, like, an hour away, if traffic's okay, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously, not the greatest, but, um, it was the only place with an empty bed, and I didn't want to spend 12 more hours in the fucking hospital, in the ER, so, we went to Vancouver, and the ambulance picked me up, and they literally, like, strapped me down, and we're like, let's go, and I was like, cool, <laughs> Fun. Oh, but I forgot to mention, in the ER was my dad for like 12 hours, which actually like I didn't even mention my dad was there, but like he wasn't there initially, but apparently like it's protocol and rules that you have to call the guardian of said patient if they're a minor. So, excuse me. <laughs> so they called my dad and he came and he was like upset because I didn't call him first and I didn't ask for help and yada 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 but at the time I was still like distrustful of him and like I don't know like I was still very like traumatized by how like hey pathetic and just like disconnected he was after we found out that my mom died and like how he virtually gave me like no support whatsoever and like I was just like stunned by how callous he was and, like, I was still very hurt by that, so I still, like, didn't trust him, and, like, I still, like, didn't want him with me, because, like, I felt like he might, like, start a fight, or he, like, might get angry with me, or he might, like, think that I'm, like, because for a long time, like, he's kind of always thought of my mental health issues and my trauma as something big, but, like, I was able to handle it, and it was, like, controlled, and it was okay, and in some ways, he was right, because I do have a lot of self-control, but, like, that's not by choice. Like, if I had the choice between how I am now and being the way that millions of my peers are, I would choose being a clueless peer <laughs> instead of who I am. But I can't change what I've gone through, and I can't change who I am, so I just kind of have to accept it. And someday love myself but that day is not today so we're just gonna move on <laughs> um but yeah we actually like he came over even though i like i wasn't expecting him and i didn't want him uh it was actually really great that he came over because like he realized like the hospital was like good for both of us because like it helped him realize just like how serious like my problems are and like how serious Lee, I need support that he's not giving because he doesn't know how to give it. Um, which is understandable. Like, he never was exposed to, like, like, any kind of mental health issues aside from PTSD. And his PTSD was from the military. So, very different from what I've gone through. Like, I can understand why he doesn't, isn't very understanding. And plus, like, he was raised by my grandma who's Japanese and they, uh... <laughs> No offense to Japanese, but they're, they're not very, like, emotional support people. They're not very emotional, emotionally supportive. So, he just kind of grew up in that kind of environment. So, like, he doesn't know how to emotionally support somebody very well. And plus, like, he doesn't really understand mental health issues, like, at all. So, I didn't expect much from him, but I got even less than my worst nightmare because like he just was completely clueless and like didn't help me at all and i just like i couldn't 
wrap my head around it and I was like so hurt and so like shocked by it that like I just couldn't handle it and I thought I thought that at the time that like him coming over would like make me feel like worse um but it turns out that my hospital like was a huge like shock to him and he was hurt as well because he knew that I didn't trust him uh well he didn't know until I was literally in the ER about to be trans like 12 hours away from being transferred to a mental institute and hadn't called him because I didn't trust him and it was very obvious even though I didn't say so he knew so he like was shocked by both the fact that like I didn't trust him and that my problems were very very serious more serious than he ever could have anticipated and like I think that those two things were like a really good shock like I know like nobody likes being shocked but like I think it was a good like lesson for him because like he actually like talked about like how the reason that he acted so callous was because he was legitimately like confused and like didn't know how to react because like he knew that my mom hurt me so like and he didn't particularly like my mom and he didn't understand mental health issues so like he didn't understand that she was like mentally sick but she wasn't like crazy and she was actually a really good mom and she really did love me and I really loved her and like I don't know like he just couldn't understand or fathom it so plus like he's so used to like shutting down his emotions because of how he was raised but also because of the military um because he talked about when we were in the hospital together that for because he was he was in the military for literally decades <laughs> i'm not even joking like decades okay and he like is a very sociable person like he loves interacting with people he loves being connected with his people and his family and his home blah 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 so when you're in the military like you get really lonely because everything's all business like you never really stop working um like even your work buddies like they're not really like true people that like you really like care for well i mean you do but like it's not the same you know and so he would like get really homesick and like, lonely and like really like emotional but you can't have that if you're a soldier so he learned to like not dissociate per se but like disconnect with his emotions but like he's been doing it for so many years now that like it's become a really bad habit so even now that he's out of the military well i'm sorry he's not completely out of the military he's like on reserves but like still he's not he's like pretty much retired from the military like he's not on like he's not active so he doesn't need to be using this coping mechanism but it's become such a habit because he's been doing it for so many years that he still does it even with the people that he's close to so like me his brother his mom like just people in general like even stressful situations he'll like disconnect and shut up shut down or suppress his emotions so like he's very like unaware of like how to emotionally support or respond to people because like he doesn't even understand his own emotions you know because he's been avoiding them and suppressing them for so many years so he probably has like the emotional maturity of somebody who's like five you know like he literally like cannot process you know because he just stopped at such a young age and kept doing it for so long and so like but once he explained that to me and it was like very obvious that like he was hurt and like he really does love me which i knew that like he's always loved me but like i just didn't know like uh if he was ever going to change and i still don't really know if he's ever going to change because like you can never be sure and you can never control somebody changing or growing you know i can help him but i can't do it for him you know like i'm not gonna like run the race for him when it's his race you know like i can't do that I can show him how to do it i can train him but in the end he's the one who has to run his own race he's the one who has to grow so i can't do that for him so um but anyways like the 12 hours at the hospital was like really helpful and like helped us reconnect and like heal and like get to know each other more 
and like understand why we are the way that we are you know <laughs> and like how we were shown to people and like i really think that he needs therapy but he's not really willing to do therapy unless it's to for his ptsd but he doesn't want to do therapy for like anything else but and this might be mischievous this might not be but like um there's this program at kaiser called iop it is basically like a group therapy with parents to help them understand and learn coping mechanisms for the kids or the teens as well as the parents so that they can cope with their child's mental health issues as well um which at first i tried this but i tried this on my own because i knew that my mom wouldn't be able to handle it and at the time i was still very untrusting of my dad's like emotional capacity which he still basically has the same emotional capacity like he's still stunted um but the difference now is i at least have like hope that he can change because our stay at the hospital and like just the past like he only visited me at like the hospital like three times um because he could only really visit on weekends because vancouver's in the bay area and we live in sacramento which is the valley so like it's an hour long drive if you're lucky um but if there's like severe traffic like it's just like ridiculously long and so much gas and like blah 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 blah, blah. so he only visited me like three times like for each like weekend um at the uh hospital but like in those times like he's really like supportive and he's very like understanding well not understanding but like trying to understand and like caring you know which i'm not like used to so like that was like really eye-opening into the fact that like he really is kind of like a helpless child like and he just needs to like relearn how well not even relearn but like learn how to cope and like deal with his emotions instead of suppressing them and disconnecting with them you know because that's not healthy and he's never going to have a real relationship with anybody in his life if he continues doing that you know so i personally think that he needs therapy for that specifically not just ptsd but he's never going to realize that for a, well i shouldn't say never but he's not going to realize that for a long 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 time so <laughs> for now we're doing the iop program together because if because it's kind of mischievous in the way that like i'm kind of guilt tripping him low-key like i'm not straight out saying like oh my god i can't believe you're not doing this for me because this is like for me and you're gonna help me with this blah 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 but like subtly i keep giving him hints like i would really appreciate it if you went to the ip program with me because like the ip program is like really good for us and i really think that you need to learn more about my mental health issues and how to cope with it as well because that way you can be more helpful to me and we, our relationship can grow and blah, 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 blah. So kind of guilt tripping him, kind of mischievous, but like also he really needs this kick in the butt to like get moving because he's not going to do it on his own. Um, and hopefully by the end of the IUP program, like it opens up his eyes enough to realize that like he needs therapy for what I know he needs therapy for. But if not... Um, I can talk to his therapist and, like, be like, hey, so, I don't know if you realize or not, but, like, my dad, like, literally, like, is not connected with his emotions at all and suppresses them a lot. So, would there be a way for you to, like, sneakily slide in the topic of his emotional capacity and, like, teach him how to deal with his emotions again? And, yeah, we'll see how that goes. If the IP program doesn't give him the eye-opening awakening that I want it to, hopefully me talking to his therapist will. <laughs> because his therapist is actually, like, a kind of friend of his, actually, I think. I think he even has, like, her personal number or something like that. But, like, um, so, like, they talk a lot. Well, not a lot, but, like, they do therapy a lot. But, like, for specifically PTSD. But, like, I think that I could talk to her, you know? And if my dad doesn't let me talk to her, like, low-key can do detective work and, like, figure out her name and then, like, go on his phone when he's not looking and, like, call her and be like, hey, this is his daughter that he probably, like, talks about 
sometimes, rarely, probably in a bad mood because, like, I'm an annoying brat when I want to be. But, like, <laughs> hold on. <gasps> Took a short breather because I'm thirsty because I've been talking for a ridiculously long time, per usual. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if the need arises, I will do just some detective work, but like, probably won't need to. I'm hoping I won't need to. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my dad and I's relationship has greatly improved. Um, unfortunately, low key, been like trying to like work on my dad and uncle's relationship because their relationship is really bad right now understandably so <laughs> but i'm trying to like get my uncle to like like go of things because my dad is really trying he's just really 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 slow and in denial of being slow and i don't mean like slow like mentally like i mean like He's not, like, slow, like, intelligently, and he, like, doesn't have any, like, um, like, disabilities that I know of, but, like, I mean, like, emotionally, like, his emotional capacity slash, like, intuition is, like, way, 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 below my uncle's and I's. And I have a lot more patience and, like, understanding of people who, like, aren't on my level per se like I'm not like trying to be like oh my god like I'm on such a high level like no I literally freaking hate myself sometimes but like I do have a lot more emotional maturity slash understanding and intuition and and what's the word I'm looking for here uh intuitive intuition yeah I already said that never mind anyways then the average person, let alone teenager, <laughs> I will say that, but it's because of what I've gone through, not because of who I am, but I guess who I am is because of what I've gone through, so technically it is because of who I am, but like, I don't know, the what if scenario always runs through my mind because of my anxiety, so like, what if I didn't go through any drama, what if I only went through the average amount of trauma that an average person goes through and like lived a said normal life, like, would I be the same person? No. Like, would I have the same emotional capacity and maturity? No. So, I wouldn't be me. So. You know. Anyways. So, um. So, yeah. Like, I have a lot more patience because I have a lot more experience with, like, dealing with people who are, like, beneath me. And, like, dealing with people, like, who need help and I need to help them. Well, I don't need to help my dad, but, like, I want to help my dad. And, like, I love my dad. And, like, I don't want to have like a stunted relationship or a broken with relationship with him forever especially now that I know that he's capable of growing he just needs little baby steps to get there you know um but my uncle like has a lot less patience than I do and a lot less understanding so he's like completely like cut off from my dad and like just doesn't want to interact with him at all which is understandable like I get that way too sometimes sometimes I literally cannot stand being near my dad but I also have to understand especially now with like my eyes like opened if you will like that a lot of what my dad does like he's not aware of it being wrong like he doesn't even like he doesn't even realize like how emotionally stunted he is and the horrible things that he does to people because of it you know, like, he just doesn't have an emotional connection or any empathy hardly at all. Like, he just doesn't get it. He doesn't understand. He, it's like dealing with a five-year-old. Like, you can't explain something a growing adult would or, like, an adolescent would to a five-year-old. And his emotional maturity is like a five-year-old, so us trying to explain it on our own and not letting him grow by himself like through therapy and growing emotionally that way and just trying to explain our emotional maturity to him it's like he's not capable of understanding like he doesn't get it he rejects it and he just like can't handle it and 
so my uncle is kind of like giving up on him and like doesn't want to cooperate <laughs> or try anymore and he kind of just like is completely cut off from my dad which is sad because they're twin brothers like they love each other like you know like they they truly do like they just have a lot of differences <laughs> a lot of differences okay and um yeah but not only that like they're my dad's like complete obliviousness and ignorance to his own problems and emotional stunting and my uncle's awareness and irritation with it just completely clashes you know and like the friction between them like creates like a friction between the whole family you know which is like really hard because like it creates stress for not only me but my grandma and like other people in our family and like it just literally like offsets the whole like cycle of our small little family because we have a really small family okay like it's hard so i know that they'll never ever ever be buddy buddy they'll never ever be the closest brothers ever in the world but they can at least somewhat get to the level where they can tolerate each other and like not keep butting heads every fucking 10 seconds because it's really irritating <laughs> and like i'm fed up with it I understand I completely understand like I fully understand why it's happening I'm just trying to get my uncle to understand and later on my my dad to understand that like everybody has their differences okay like you guys are literally family like you cannot keep butting heads like this because you're family like you have to work together because you guys are both healthy adults like and you guys are family, so naturally, you guys have to overcome your differences and just get along somewhat, even if it's just for a little bit. Like, you just, you just have to, because, like, you cannot, <laughs> like, just, because they're going to be around each other indirectly or directly, like, in each other's lives for the rest of their lives. And, like, they can't continue with, like, fighting all the time because it's not healthy for either of them it's not healthy for either of their families it's like not healthy for our family like it's not good okay like it's horrible like i don't care how many differences you guys have like in the end at the end of the day you guys are family like get over it <laughs> like it's gonna be hard but we just have to be patient <laughs> so yeah basically i'm gonna have the same talk well, I actually had the talk with my uncle, but, like, he's kind of irritated with me because of it. Because he probably doesn't like me talking to him like that. But, you know what? Another thing that mm, the hospital helped me realize is stop holding back. Like, in my mom's <sighs> death, I still hate saying that word, um, really helped me with that, too. Because, like, I realized there are so many things that I've missed out on life because I held back. Um... And I don't want to continue doing that anymore. So, like, from now on, I'm not just going to be honest. I'm going to be, like, forward and, like, not hold back anymore. Like, I'm, like, I'm done, like, suppressing, like, my needs for the needs of others purely for the sake of avoiding confrontation. Because... Sometimes confrontation is needed to get your point across. Like, sometimes, like, it's needed. Sometimes so-called disrespect is needed if somebody's disrespecting you first. Like, sometimes confrontation can be a good thing. In a controlled environment and in a healthy way, not repeatedly over and over and over or irrational, like, erratic confrontation over and over and over. Like, that's not healthy. But, like, confrontation where you get your point across and you resolve an issue rather than le leaving it unsaid and, like, brew, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Grudges and, like, resentment towards each other. Like, just confront each other and, like, get your points across and, like, consult people around you on what to do about the situation or consult each other on what to do about the situation. Because how can you compromise if you don't know each side of the argument? You know? Like, 
you can't. So sometimes confrontation is good. Um, but usually one or both parties <laughs> involved don't enjoy it. Uh, but it needs to be done. So, yeah. So needless to say, my uncle's not exactly happy with me because I said all those things to him, but they need to be said. And once my dad is far enough along with his therapy and he's developed a level of emotional maturity where he can understand, I'm going to explain what I've already explained to my uncle, that you guys need to get along because you can't keep butting heads forever. You know, it's not going to work out. Like, you guys are going to kill each other. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't actually get to talking about my stay in the hospital because I talked too much and got carried away. But I think I'll actually talk about my stay in the hospital tomorrow because I'm legitimately tired and my voice is kind of shot. Uh, so... Good night. <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing the like finger gun shit stuff. Whatever. Anyways, bye. <laughs>